We had a good week seven on DraftKings, scoring 147 points, which was good for 37th out of 200 competitors in a 50-50 contest. We will talk all about week eight and get you ready with our cash game lineup as well as the GPP lineup all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Gary Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. Week 7 is in the books, on to Week 8. But before we talk about Week 8, you know, just to almost by way of reminder to the viewers, one of the reasons why on Fantasy Football Consultants our cash lineups tend to do really well is because we use the principles that we put out there in our nine uh, course DFS Masters class that is available on YouTube. For one, free. For free. Thank you for that. Free is everybody's favorite word. Well, one of those principles we used last week is the free square running back. Right? That's the running back that um, doesn't usually have a starting role, but takes over for a starting role in case of injury or you know somebody gets benched. Um, but they have backup pricing associated with them. Right? In this case, this past week it was Latavius Murray. Um, we didn't know when we filmed the show on Wednesday morning that Alvin Kamara would definitely be ruled out. It turns out by Friday afternoon he was. We always, anything that uh, affects not only our update, but if it has a major effect on the NFL landscape at all, we will put it on our website. We will also um, make notes on the, uh, on the YouTube video comments themselves. So please, Go back and look at the uh, top of the YouTube video comments, or better yet, look at our YouTube website for any changes and any updates, whether it be free square running back uh, or anything else that changes the NFL landscape. Because the last thing that we want you, the viewers, to do is to create a lineup on on, uh, Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening, whenever, and then set it and forget it. That's always the wrong thing to do. you got to keep updating your lineup based on changes in the NFL landscape. Um, Latavius Murray, we did that, and it netted us 30 35 points plus opportunities to get more expensive players. So it really tends to work out well for us and the viewers. Yeah, so we weren't the only ones that had good weeks. We had a couple of viewers qualify for our contest, our DraftKings Contest League, which begins in week 11 where they can win real money. Who qualified from week 7? So week 7, our four qualified, actually five, because oh, we, we have an iTunes qualifier as well. So the four YouTube qualifiers were Cleo Hatch. Stephen Neighbors, Danger Ross, which is my favorite name of the four, and Logan Pendergraft, and on iTunes for writing us a, uh, a review on iTunes, uh, or writing a, a, a recommendation on iTunes, and then giving us a five-star review, uh, City Picker. So City Picker uh, joins the other four qualify, qualifying people for that contest starting in week 11. And we'll talk a lot more about that contest as we get closer to week 11. Um, if you have not qualified, don't worry. We still have a couple more weeks where you can get in. Here's the contest for this week, week eight. Enter in the YouTube comments of this video who you think on the main slate of games at the flex position, which we're talking about running back, wide receiver, or tight end, is going to score the most draft king points. That's one thing you do. The second thing you list is whoever you think is going to score the second most DraftKings points for that week. That will only be used in tiebreaker uh, uh, situations. And then the third thing, Gary, they need to let us know what their DraftKings username is. Yep, and all in the comment section of this video. And please, main slate participants only and by 10 o'clock Pacific time in the morning. On Sunday. <laughs> On Sunday. 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Excellently put. All right. So, Gary, you know what? I really am a little overwhelmed sometimes when I see the growth of our channel and I see the, the, the feedback and the number of likes we get versus the number of dislikes we get. And I cannot tell you how much it, we appreciate it. It makes all the work that we do, and we do do a lot of work in both prepping and then post-production of our uh, videos. Um, but... We really want to say thank you to you. And I know some of you are wondering, how can you do, what can you do to help us out? There's really two things that we care about, which is growth, growth in our iTunes and growth in our YouTube channel. If you want to help us on iTunes, simply go to iTunes, type in in the search menu, Fantasy Football Consultants, 
our podcast will pop up. Now, you've already listened to our podcast. You just didn't know it because our podcasts are just right. simulcasts of all our daily fantasy football shows. If you could just mind taking the 30 seconds to a minute to write a, a review. If you like our show, write a review uh, in, uh, in on iTunes. Yeah, absolutely. And then to support our show on YouTube, uh, you can do a few things. One, if you like the video, well, like the video, right? Hit that like button. And please, if you are watching our videos but you haven't yet subscribed, smash that red subscriber button. Subscribers, really, it's the best reflection of growth for a YouTube channel. So that is probably the most important thing to us. Smash that red subscriber button. And then finally, of course, we want to grow out the Fantasy Football Consultants football community. What does that mean? Share the video with family, with friends, perhaps with league mates or other people you play DFS with. Anybody who you think would be interested and appreciate our contest, please go ahead and share. We'd really appreciate it. So let's get right into our studio to talk about week eight, and we will provide you with our DraftKings cash lineup as well as our suggested GPP lineup. All right, we're going to start, Gary, with our cash game lineup. And we always want to start at running back because we don't want to be resource constrained when we want to pay up likely for running back if we see the right running back. Normally that's Christian McCaffrey, but even we have to pass on Christian oh, McCaffrey uh-uh. given his price and given his matchup this week against your very difficult San Francisco 49er defense. Uh, you know, I'm surprised. I get that Christian McCaffrey right now is or at least should be in the lead for the NFL's most valuable player, but he can't be higher priced than a couple of these running backs when he's going against literally the best rush defense in the NFC and the 49ers. I'm surprised. I would much rather just scroll down one to Saquon Barkley, who I think everybody would agree is absolutely in the same category as Christian McCaffrey, and I love his matchup literally like 50 million times better than Christian McCaffrey uh, for a lower price. Well, here's the deal. Detroit, by contrast, has the third worst defense versus running backs in the entire NFL. It is a dream matchup because, of course, the way you attack uh, Detroit's on the ground, they actually have a pretty good uh, secondary, two good cornerbacks, not just uh, not just Darius Slay, but they have a, a pretty lousy front four. Everybody's running on them all day long. Saquon Barkley is back. And he's the bell cow back now. He's, he's back from injury. He should have a field day in this game. And I want to comment about that matchup because you might go, hold on. What did you say in your DFS masterclass? You said you wanted a running back who was favored. You want a running back as home. Barkley is neither. But Barkley's a special running back. He's yeah. game script proof, Gary. If they get behind, then he's just going to be more involved in the passing game, which is on DraftKings, remember, a full point per reception. Yeah, and, and you know, this game has got a high over under. It's got a 49 at least at the time of this filming, 49 over under. So you know there are going to be points scored. And with the New York Giants, that's almost inevitably Saquon Barkley, whether it's on the ground through the air. Bottom line, it's an incredible matchup for one of the NFL's best running backs. Um, I'm really shocked that he's not the highest price. I want to take advantage of that and pick Barkley for sure. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I see people going, there's a Q next to his name. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. We will monitor it. We will monitor it. We think uh, that, remember, this, the probable designation has gone away, right? Uh, and he did play last week, got a little, little, little banged up. But I, we think he's going to be good to go. But if he's not, we will make the change. He will, and I'll tell you why. Because the New York Giants coach just came out and said the Q is based, based on game. Game soreness. <laughs> like everybody isn't sore after playing an NFL game. I get that he hadn't done it in a few weeks, but folks, he's fine. No injury at all. All right, so what we're going to do is for $7,000, we are going to pair Barkley. Yes, we are paying up the dough on Chris Carson. Yep. Now, look, I know he's expensive, but he's $800 less than Leonard Fournette. He's $1,900 less than Saquon Barkley. And you are getting a bell cow back in a really good situation. Last four weeks, Chris Carson had 24, 28, 29, and 26 touches, Gary. He yeah. is the man. I, I, as a Seahawk fan, I promise you, I promise you, the Seahawks want to run the ball, and they want to run the ball with Chris Carson. So you just have to ask yourself, do you think the game script will get away from Seattle? I don't think so. They're playing at Atlanta, an Atlanta team that was just torched by the Rams. Uh, the Seahawks, there's a question whether, whether their quarterback uh, is even going to play, that being um, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm very... 
very confident in uh, Chris Carson here. And remember, they have followed through on their promise to get him involved as well in the passing game. Look, here's the deal. The, <laughs> the Falcons are such a good matchup. They literally give 114. This is an average. <laughs> To the average running back that they face, they've given up 114 yards and eight touchdowns so far in a season that's not even half old yet, right? And so imagine what they can do to a running team with an awesome running back like Chris Carson. What, do you, what does that all spell, Eric? Incredibly high floor. Incred- and not to mention incredibly high ceiling. So, yeah, absolutely. I love Chris Carson. I love the matchup. But, by the way, Rashad Penny, for those of you scoring at home, that's zero carries in two consecutive games. You literally have nothing to worry about they, with Belkin's they, status. They're committed to Carson, I can guarantee you, as a Seahawks fan. So, um, all right. So, the only issue earlier was his fumbling, and he hasn't fumbled in the last couple of weeks. He's truly a much talent, more talented running back than anyone that they have. All right, so let's move to the wide receiver. And the one thing I've noticed, Gary, is we have spent a lot of money. So it is time to go bargain hunting. Well, a bargain hunting, but again, there's some incredible <laughs> values out there. Can I say value hunting? I, it just sounds better than bargain hunting. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I wasn't a marketing guy. Look, here's the deal. There are a couple of incredible values, and let me tell you about one, because this is just flat-out mispricing, folks. There is no way that what can John Brown do for you be only 59? I know, that's an overused phrase. I won't do that again. He's now the best Brown wide receiver in the NFL. He is the best Brown. (laughs) Well, you have somebody in Baltimore, Marquise, who might argue with that. But I like John. I do. I like John a lot. All right, here's the deal. What do I like about John Brown? Well, first of all, what I like are his stats, right? Because John Brown is top 15 in the NFL in yards per game. This guy is a machine. He, he may not be a household name yet, but he should be, right? Again, top 15 yards per game, top 15, uh, uh, you know, fantasy points too in receivers, uh, you know, if you're scoring that at home. And he's only $5,900. You don't get top 15 people for only $5,900. I, I think it's a little bit of a mispricing, especially when you consider... His matchup. Look, he, yeah, because he, he has gotten a rapport with Allen. That is, is certain. And like you said, boy, you can expose that this week against the Eagles. You start your tight ends against Arizona. You start your, you know, your slot receivers against Cincinnati. Well, gosh darn it, you start your perimeter receivers against Philadelphia. They are the worst in the NFL. And, of course... Our guy, John Brown's a perimeter receiver, right? He runs the fly patterns. Philly's dead last. Dead last. Here's what they've done, okay? They have given up a 100-yard game to a perimeter receiver, not once, not twice, but all seven times they have been on the field, they have given up 100 yards, and, and it well, 100 yards and five out of seven times touchdowns to a perimeter receiver. It's literally the best matchup in the NFL for a guy who's number 15 at his position. Again, only $5,900, huge value. They interviewed the defensive coordinator specifically about that, and he said... <laughs> now, there's one caveat to this, and that is it may rain. Now, it's not supposed to rain in Philly on Friday or Saturday or Monday or Tuesday, but it is supposed to rain on Sunday. That's a long-term forecast. We're filming on Wednesday morning. We will pay attention to that. A little bit of light rain is statistically completely insignificant, even to uh, perimeter receivers. However, if it starts to rain with any alacrity, then we may move off the John Brown pick. But I hope like heck not. I get it. Fully acknowledge that Larry Fitzgerald had a bad game last week. He only caught one pass. You know the last time that Larry Fitzgerald caught only one pass in the game? It was 2014, game one. (laughs) This guy normally has such a great floor. Before this game this year, he had caught at least five passes every week. He is very dependable. So what happened last week? What happened is Arizona decided they were just going to run the ball all the time <laughs> against the New York Giants because they could. Can they, you, you go, well, what, can that happen this week? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess no, 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 no. New Orleans defense, they have a great run defense. Where you attack them is in the air. And so um, that is not going to happen this week. And the one concern, Gary, that we have had in the past about someone who could conceivably be a number one wide receiver is Marshawn Latimer. But Larry Fitzgerald plays from the slot. So we don't think 
that Latimer will be shadowing him. No, Even if unlikely. he does, uh, it's still great value at 5,400 from a number one wide receiver against a team that you can pass on. Yeah, and, and again, it's very unlikely that Marshawn Lattimore is, is going to be shadowing him. So I, I think this is a great value matchup. And, and, the, and who, who, is, who are the Arizona going to rely on? Because the Saints will score. So the, 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 the Cardinals will have to pass. David Johnson may not be playing and may not be 100% to catch passes out of the backfield. Christian Kirk may not be playing. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And that's why Larry Fitzgerald has been so consistent in the volume because, you know, when you got two guys who have been in and out of the course of the season and injuries, yeah, he absolutely gets the volume. He leads Arizona in targets, in yards, and in red zone looks, folks. And I got another receiver that just screams high floor, screams consistency, and, and at his price just screams value. These are the guys that win cash contests. Who am I talking about? This week it's Cortland Sutton. Right. From the Denver Broncos. From the Denver Broncos. And I know one guy who's no longer on the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emmanuel Sanders went to some great 6-0 and team. I just can't remember who it is. I t- <laughs> Would someone, for the love of God, beat the 49ers? <laughs> uh, you know what? This is a DFS league. We're not even going to get into actual teams and how well they play. Cortland Sutton, folks. Look, here's the deal. Even if Emmanuel Sanders hadn't gone, that only benefits, probably benefits Emmanuel Sanders, definitely benefits Cortland Sutton because, look, his tar- Emmanuel Sanders' five targets a game has got to go somewhere, right? And you better believe that some of those are going to go to Cortland Sutton, right? Because other than a rookie wide receiver, they have nobody else left to throw to on that team. You know, it, and not only that, but you got a rookie tight end, too, for that matter. It's, it's, this is, through the air at least, you know, predicting to be the Cortland Sutton show. And look, he's just way underpriced. He already, even with competing, if you will, against with Emmanuel Sanders, Cortland Sutton is top 20 in the NFL in fantasy points, right? He is extraordinarily consistent. And the way you attack Indy, they really do have a very good front four. It's very difficult to run on Indy. It is extraordinarily easy, at least this year, to pass on Indy. So that's how you attack him. And again, through the air, Cortland Sutton's getting the lion's share of targets. And with his, with his bigger body and with his burst, he's getting the red zone looks. Not Noah Fant. Not anybody out of the backfield because they've got diminutive uh, running backs in, in Freeman and, and Lindsey. It, it's, it's already, even with Emmanuel Sanders, Cortland Sutton getting the red zone looks, it's going to be even more so, folks. You know the volume is going to be there. The opportunity is going to be there. And when they fall behind, they're going to have to throw, throw, throw. So, again, so, Cortland Sutton being only 5,300, it just it feels like a, a mispricing and a great opportunity. What you want in the cash game is a high floor. And you love the fact that every game this year, he has gotten at least seven targets, and in most games, eight or more. You just love that consistency. Yeah, so and that's going to get even better with Emmanuel Sanders being out of Denver. So let's go ahead and choose Cortland Sutton. Okay, so Gary, let's take a look at tight end. Where do we want to go on tight end? Again, we spent a lot on running back, so, you know, George Kittle and, and Aaron Waller would be wonderful but we probably got to save a little more money. Yeah, and I got a guy who's going to do as well as any of them. Bold prediction from oh somebody who's six or seventh down the pricing list. But Hunter Henry's pricing has not caught up to him yet. He spent most of the year out with that uh, with the patellar injury. Sorry, patellar is Mahomes, but he does have a knee injury. Um, same concept. He's been back for two games, and I'm telling you, DraftKings pricing out of them just hasn't caught up to the volume yet. Hunter they're trying. Henry. They're trying. They bumped him up from four thousand, but uh, yeah, now 4, he's, almost, he's almost five thousand. So they're getting yeah. there, but they're just not there yet. He, here's what he's been doing in the last two games: fourteen catches, almost two hundred yards, and two touchdowns in two games. And if you can get anywhere close to that production out of a tight end, especially for under five thousand dollars, you take it, you grab it in a heartbeat. Look, here's the deal: this is nothing new. Right. If you prorate Hunter Henry's seasons over the past few years, and you kind of have to because he's been more injured than not, right? Hunter Henry profiles out to be a top three tight end, and he's doing it again this year. And that's not a surprise because when he was drafted, people knew that he had top uh, top three tight end skill set. 
and he's got a quarterback that loves to throw to the tight end. Do you realize that the tight ends have garnered more red zone looks than any other position on the Chargers each and every year for the past five years? That doesn't just include Hunter Henry. They had so many named Antonio Gates before that, too. Oh, and not only that, but top two targets. Again, that counts wide receivers, running backs, etc. Look, the Chargers love to throw to tight ends. Phillip Rivers, same quarterback, same uh, offensive coordinator. They're doing the same things this year, this time with Hunter Henry, who arguably has a better skill set than any tight end they've had since Antonio Gates was in his prime. Pricing just hasn't caught up to him yet. We're going to grab it at 49. Gary, I just want to ask a quick question because I think the audience may be wondering, are you concerned at all with Hunter Henry's matchup? He's playing at Chicago this week. Does it cause you some concern or you're not as worried? No, actually, it's probably, if anything, a plus. The one thing Chicago has going for it, and it's not a lot this season, but the one thing they have going is their front four. Chicago will get at the quarterback. That's the, you know, that's the catalyst for everything they do on defense. Great news, folks. If you come at the quarterback, they have to throw shorter passes because they have less time. That means the Austin Eckler show, and that means the Hunter Henry show. If anything, I think it's going to be a positive for those two players. All right, so let's take a look at quarterback, Gary. What is clear when we see an average cost of 4200 is that we are not going to be able to afford the top quarterbacks. What did Ryan Tannehill do in his first starting gig last week? He got a QB rating of 120. That was one of the highest QB ratings of anybody in the NFL last week. And that was versus a pretty good uh, Los Angeles Chargers uh, defense. The guy threw for 312 yards and two TDs and only one interception. Right. And, you know, that's kind of reflective. He's had a long career because he's an accurate quarterback with good poise. And, and at the end of the day, that's all Tennessee really needs with their defense. Oh, and by the way, who they're going up against? Tampa Bay. You love Tampa Bay. I mean, they have a bottom three pass defense, but they actually allow the least amount of run yards of anybody in the NFL, probably because most people just pass on them all day. Okay, so one of the things that we said in our NFL DFS Masterclass is, you're looking for a quarterback, you'd like to get a quarterback that's at home and that's favored. That's both true for Tannehill, so let's grab him. All uh, right. Then we, we look to the flex. And we see we only have a total of 7,500, Gary. So Christian McCaffrey's off the, yeah. off the list. Yeah. We <laughs> okay. All right. So it, 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 Cooper Cup's off the list because <laughs> we have to pay, pay something for a defense. So we're, we're looking again for, for value. And we think we found someone uh, in, uh, in Detroit at the running back position. We do. And Eric, what are your what are your four favorite words in the English language? Free, square, running back. Free, square, running back, folks. I got one for you. And his name is Ty Johnson. So carry on Johnson is now an IR for Detroit. Look how far I'm scrolling down. This is why you love free square running backs. Because they're priced at a backup, but they will get starter volume. Look. Ty Johnson is not going to compete. I'm still scrolling, folks, by the way, if you're looking at home here. Ty, there he is. $4,900 for crying out loud. Look, if last game was any indication, and it was, or and it is, he is not going to have any competition on first and second downs, and he's not going to have any competition for the red zone looks. J.D. McKissick is the only other running back that Detroit has, and he's a third down pass catching specialist. He has been in his entire career, whether it's been Detroit or whether it's been Seattle. So you have got somebody who is virtually guaranteed at a minimum 15 touches, probably somewhere in that 15 to 20 range. By the way, Ty Johnson was a darn good pass catcher out of college. Oh, and, and in, in uh, only about half a game of action last week, he had four targets and three catches. I, I mean, honestly, this guy could be a three-down running back. Even if he isn't, he will get 15 to 20 catches for $4,900. 15 to 20 touch guys are worth $5,900 at least. So you're getting an incredible value here over a team, by the way, that's facing a New York Giants. You can run on them all day long. By the way, just ask his Arizona Cardinals about that, right? Or you can pass. You can do whatever you want to, basically, against the Giants defense. It is a great matchup, folks, for Ty Johnson to step into. We'll be talking about that again next week when he faces the Oakland Raiders, unless somehow DraftKings pricing catches up with this guy bang in one week. you got to grab your free square running backs. All right. Um... 
I agree with everything he said, except that somehow I'm an Arizona Cardinal fan. <laughs> um, so the last position is uh, defense, and we have exactly $2,600. And we are going to use a lot of that, $2,400, yep. to pick the Carolina Panthers defense. And uh-oh, we may get an argument. Because <laughs> Where they, go they, against? They, they go against the San Francisco 49ers. Go! But this is the, at a very good, very reasonable uh, price. Yeah. Question for you. Who leads the entire NFL in sacks? That would be the Carolina Panthers. Yes, it We've would. We've told you in our NFL DFS master class, what you want in a, in a defense is one that puts pressures on, your, on, the, on the quarterback. That can lead to, obviously, sacks, but also can lead to mistakes, which is what you really need. Fumbles are interceptions, and hope upon hope, a trip to the to the house. And might I say, and, is, and I'm worried that I'm going to get an argument. Might I say that although your San Francisco 49ers is are playing maybe the best defensive ball of anybody in the NFL over the last couple of weeks, they have struggled offensively. And Mr. Jimmy Garoppolo has been just a game manager. And if Carolina can get ahead yep. in this game, um, they have the weapons with Christian McCaffrey or not. It could put a lot of pressure in making you guys have to pass. Now, here's what I love about this matchup. First of all, Carolina has the third most fantasy points of any defense in the NFL. So it's shocking to see their price so low. Now, they're priced so low because they're facing San Francisco, and San Francisco runs the ball so incredibly successfully. But here's the problem. For the past two weeks, Pro Bowler Joe Staley, left tackle, has been out. Pro Bowler Mike uh, McGlinchey, right guard, has been out. Pro Bowler, you're catching a theme here, folks. Uh, Kyle Juszczyk, fullback, has been out. So for the last two games, they haven't been very good at all at running the ball. Obviously, he goes through Paul Barber's. Yeah, it's going to affect you. But the point is, they got to pass. And they know they have to pass. And Carolina's going to know they have to pass. And again, their passing game, okay, fine. They just got Emmanuel Sanders. That'll be great for the future. He will have been with the team a grand total of four days. If he plays, he'll be on a snap count. At the end of the day, you've got a, and I will agree with this comment, game manager quarterback with nobody who's anybody's wide receiver one on that team. They do have George Kittle, but at the end of the day, they have a nearly as successful passing, and that's what I think they're forced into against a very, very good pass defense. So at this price, I actually love the Carolina Panthers, even though they're going against the Niners. Okay, quickly recap our cash game lineup before we go to GPP. So, quarterback Ryan Tannehill, just incredible value. Saquon Barkley, Chris Carson, those are your, uh, your top flight running backs. John Brown, Larry Fitzgerald, Cortland Sutton are your wide receivers. Hunter Henry is your tight end. Ty Johnson is your free square running back flex. And Carolina Panthers a defense. Okay, so we spent a lot of time on the cash, but we want to go through the GPP really quickly. And what we do, Gary, always with the GPP is we like to start with a stack. Yep. You chose a Buffalo stack. I did. I'm, I'm, I'm going all in here on Josh Allen and John Brown. I, I just, first of all, um, it's been incredibly prolific, right? I mean, you know, Josh Allen on a per-game basis, he, he's, you know, he's shown a certain amount of consistency, but what he's really shown is just flashes of brilliance because when he takes off with his legs, he can be dynamite. And John Brown versus Philadelphia – Every single time, seven games in a row, when they've gone against a perimeter receiver, they've given up over 100 yards to him. I just, oh, and uh, almost nearly a touchdown. Um, I just love his opportunity to explode. Right. We, 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 and we discussed the fact that you attacked Philadelphia in the air, not on the ground. Uh, we already talked about Ty Johnson, but tell us a little bit about Leonard Fournette as a GPP play. Well, as a GPP play, again, it's against the New York Jets, and my goodness, you saw what New England did last week against the New York Jets, primarily on the, uh, you know, with short passes um, to their running backs, and that seems to be a theme here. Leonard Fournette has gotten twice as much, right, twice as much looks, targets uh, in the passing game as he ever has in his career, and that... That seems to be the way uh, to beat the New York Jets. Jacksonville's favored in this game, so what they don't do with the short passes, uh, they're going to do on the ground. Either way, it spells huge opportunity for Fournette. Okay, we spent money in GPP to get Hopkins. It's the one wide receiver we haven't talked about. Yeah, Ogun is nobody left in the secondary. You could argue even before the trade they had nobody to begin with. It's one of the best secondaries to go against. And Hopkins... You know, there's not much challenging uh, his elite target share now that Will Fuller is injured. So, yes, you know, you got Kiki Cootie, 
right? And yes, obviously they've got somebody waiting in the wings to take over for Will Fuller. But at the end of the day, Hopkins is the only guy who's had any sort of target share at any point in his NFL and against one of the worst secondaries in football. Oh, and by the way, with the Houston team that has trouble running the ball. So they, they, uh, so they have a, a great pass to run percentage. It just spells incredible opportunity. Okay, and at defense, you love to get a, a home defense that's, uh, that is favored, and you love to get a defense right off the helms of Sam Darnold through four interceptions last, last week. Uh, uh, so we're going to take advantage there. But talk about Josh J- Jacobs uh, as and, the flex. By the way, Sam Darnold's apparently seen ghosts, so he's going to see ghosts and Jaguars here on Sunday. Uh, Josh Jacobs, you know, look, Josh Jacobs is, so far this year, he and Darren Waller are the only remotely viable weapons that Oakland has. And so what they do, what do they do? They shower. They shower them with touches, and they shower them with target shares. So it makes for great volatility among either one of those two players. I think Josh Jacobs, um, you know, Houston's offense has been prolific this year. Their defense, not so much at all, especially against running backs. So he's got... It, the, Josh Jacobs would get 15 touches on the ground. He could get easily seven or eight touches in the air in this game. And against a, a pretty poor Houston defense, that's incredible opportunity. Well, we already talked about that you would attack t- Tampa Bay in the air. You went bargain basement price to get Johnny Smith at tight end. You know, I did because Delaney Walker's still injured. Yeah. And it seems to be, from Tennessee's point of view, holy cow. I mean, their passing game... uh, Other than at a tight end position, and that right, that's caveated with a healthy tight end. You know, they they just they just haven't been good. Now, fortunately, they've got Ryan Tannehill, but Ryan Tannehill and Johnny Smith have historically had a connection. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what happens when you have uh, backups uh, throwing to backups. Is you know they're sort of the practice squad folks, so they they have that rapport, they have that connection. I'm gambling that they're going to carry over that connection onto the field without Delaney Walker. And Jonu Smith at 2800 the guy only has to catch a few passes to more than earn that salary. And against Tampa Bay, one of the worst secondaries in football, we got, some, we got a really good chance maybe you can take one to the house. Uh, so our GPP lineup at quarterback, Josh Allen, Leonard Fournette, and Ty Johnson at running back. The receivers are Hopkins, John Brown, and Cortland Sutton. The tight end is Jonu Smith. Josh Jacobs at the flex and the Jacksonville Jaguar defense. We would like to remind you guys, if you haven't yet, of course, smash the like button and subscribe. And we will put up on the screen our free nine series NFL DFS masterclass, where we give you all the tips and strategies to pick the right quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense, as well as a deep dive into the strategies of cash games and GPP play. And until week nine, we will see you next time. See you then.